Hi everybody, I'm going to show you a fun little trick on the wheel that is uh, involving two different kinds of clay. Um, I've heard it called agate wear, I've heard it called marbleized clay. Basically we're going to take a light colored clay and a larger quantity and a small quantity of a contrasting colored clay. In this case I'm going to use some red clay and I've pre-rolled it into a couple of coils but it was really about a half a pound of clay. I've rolled it out into two coils and I'm going to show you how to make some interesting patterns using this technique. So we're just going to start out by centering this piece of clay. And honestly, that slap centering is probably enough to get started with this technique. So instead of getting it wet and having to scrape it dry again, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add these coils of red clay because I'm gonna have to recenter after I add those anyway. Uh, so that's definitely an option for you. Um, if you want to center it and just scrape it with your metal rib so that there's not any slurry on there, that's also an option. So I'm gonna take this coil and I'm gonna lay it over the center of the clay and kind of work it down onto the clay. And this isn't a precision operation, but I just want to have it so that um, the end of the coil lines up pretty much with the base of the ball of clay. And then I'm going to take this other one and I'm going to actually split it in half. And oops, I'm going to stick this to the original arc and make kind of a, a cross over the top. So work that down a little bit and pat it in. You just want to make sure it's adhered well because I'm about to add water and center and I don't want it to come loose. So you can see I've packed it in there. It's still distinct. It still sticks up, but it's, um, it's pretty much on there. So now I can add water and go ahead and center that clay. And ideally you get the centering done with as little um, coning up and coning down as possible. You just want to kind of muscle it on center. And what you're going to see here is something that doesn't really look too exciting. Um, once you get it all kind of smeared up with the two colors of clay, you don't see any of the pattern. It's not till the very end of the process that the pattern becomes uh, obvious to the eye. So I'm going to go ahead and open. And I'm just going to make a cylinder based form. This is going to be a vase. And I finally open down through the red clay and I'm seeing the white clay in the middle. I don't want to have to trim it. So I'm gonna go ahead and check my, um, my thickness. Um, so I'm gonna grab a needle tool and stick it in there and check for about a quarter inch bottom thickness. And that's about where I am. And then I'm gonna pull it out a little ways. Go ahead and compress that bottom a little. This will work with a variety of shapes. You can do it for bowls. Um, it's not great for plates, but it works pretty nice for bowls, especially bowls that are upright. The pattern generally just shows up on the outside of the piece and maybe a little bit at the rim. So um, you, won't, you don't want to do a big open bowl or you won't see it, but a more vertical um, shaped bowl, it, it's pretty nice for. I'm going to go with just like a, a vertical cylinder based vase. I'm going to go ahead and haul this thing up into the air. And it's a little lumpy at the top. One of the things that's very helpful is to kind of estimate the stiffness of the two different clays you're working with. You can sort of see the stripes coming up at this point, but you want to estimate the, the stiffness and get them balanced. So the way I started, my red clay was pretty significantly stiffer than my white clay. So it's causing some distortion up here at the rim. Um, clay responds based on its density. And so if I've got mixtures of, of dense and less dense. It'll center, but you'll see some some trouble showing up later on. It's not a huge deal. I can always trim the top off if I want it level, or I can say that it's interesting, which it probably is. Really seeing those spirals coming up from the original hot cross bun pattern. 
Uh, I'm gonna take one more pull, just get some of the weight out of the base here. Using plenty of water, I don't wanna catch or drag, um, so get it nice and wet. I'm gonna dig in at the base and go ahead and get all that extra weight out of the bottom. And then I'm letting off in here because I've pretty much already thinned it out as much as I need to in this part of the pot. So I'm finding this rim kind of interesting. It sort of has um, a four-way um, alteration that's just built into it. So before I cut it off, um, just out of habit, I'm going to finish what I'm doing and give myself a chance to appreciate what initially I felt like was a, a fault. That's kind of an important lesson in working with clays. Don't be so quick to make the clay conform to your expectation. Sometimes it'll do things that you didn't predict that are actually cooler than what you were trying to do. All right, I couldn't help myself just double checking that I didn't have any extra fat down in the bottom. All right, and I'm gonna show you how to really reveal the pattern. You can kind of see it especially as the wheel's going around, but um, we want it to be prominent in the finished product. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, the red clay is a very, very minor component of this piece. It's primarily the white clay, and the red clay is really maybe, a, I don't know, an eighth of the total amount of clay. So, um, I've got to be careful. I don't want to cut a lot off. I think I'll take the wood knife and scrape away a little at the bottom and kind of see see where I am. And then it's going to be a lot of work with the ribs. So I'm going to just scrape this base. I'm tempted to take a little bit of this skirt off at the bottom. I may lose a little bit of section that has red, but I can live with that so that my proportions look nice when I'm done. And I love to take base forms and stretch them way out. I think they look more interesting when they've got a little bit more volume to them. Uh, the trick when you're stretching something is creating a shape that's pleasing. And I find that if I stretch the upper half um, preferentially, I'll get a shape that looks sort of like it's proud and sitting up tall as opposed to one that looks like it's sort of slumping or falling. So that's what I'm going to shoot for. I'm going to stretch the upper third first, and then I'll kind of continue that curve on down to the bottom. So I've got my usual ribs. I've got my Cheryl mud tool, yellow, I think this is a size one, um, kidney shaped rib, and I've got a nice um, crisp metal rib for my outside hand. And I'm going to give this a scrape. It's going to take some of the um, throwing rings off and hopefully take some of the, the slurry off to reveal the marbleized pattern. So this first pass is just about removing the gunk and smoothing the wall. So all that came off of there. I'm going to scrape it. And you're starting to see a much um, bolder stripey pattern there. It still has plenty of gunk on it, so I'll take a couple more passes. If you notice, I'm holding my rib fairly perpendicular to the wall of the pot, and that is intentional. It's not what I normally do. I normally kind of go at about a 45 to the wall of the pot, but by being more perpendicular, I'm scraping more instead of just smooshing all that stuff into the wall of the pot. It's removing a little bit of material. Um, and it's still, you know, it's still got a little uh, slurry on there that I got to get off. But we're getting there. Now we're starting to get clean. I just want to get it to the point where I feel like when I go ahead and start stretching, um, it's going to take care of the rest of it. And ideally, I won't have to come back and trim over the surface when it gets too leather hard. I love projects that can just come off the wheel and be ready to go to the bisque kiln. And this has the potential to be one of those. All 
All right. I actually think of that. That pass might have made it sort of smearier, but let's go ahead and start doing the shaping. So I'm going to start expanding the shape in the upper third. And the way that's going to work is I'm going to support with my outside rib here, and I'm going to push from underneath with my inside rib and try to expand and stretch the wall. You see it start to come out there? And then I'll keep stretching and kind of work my way down the form. You gotta be sure to come away really gradually when you're doing a move like this. I had a fair amount of pressure applied um, on the inside that's ballooning that top part out. Um, if I just come off all of a sudden, my balance will be completely out and I'll get in trouble. So um, I'll continue. I just wanted to stop and mention that. slow, slow, removal of that inner rib. And so I'm actually really, really appreciating this funky lip up at the top. I don't know how well you can tell how it looks. It's definitely uneven. I've created a little bit of a distinct corner there and I think I'm gonna go with that. I'm setting a bad example if I was supposed to come in with the perfect intention of what this pot was gonna look like. But I think I'm also setting a good example and being open to seeing the pot for what it is instead of what it should be. Maybe a life lesson there. Stretching out that upper third again. And I'm getting a little aggressive. I want this thing to be bold and beautiful. Get down here in the very bottom. Oh wow, look at that. So it went from just kind of a boring cylinder to something that's got a lot of volume and those lines that go around the form are really interesting. They really draw your eye up towards that rim. And in a lot of ways, I'm happy that that rim is something so interesting because um, that's where my eyes are being drawn by the pattern on the pot. Obviously a lot of that is just luck um, and I'll take it. So. I'm going to just take one little cleanup pass. I probably should just leave it alone, but I'm going to do um, one more little pass here from the bottom. I'll try to just scrape the surface one last time. I've switched. I'm using the flatter side of the rib. And I'm going to come up with the corner of it and meet that interesting little detail and kind of accentuate it, create a little bit of a, a break in the line there and I'm torn about what to do here at the rim obviously I don't want to cut it level or anything like that and um, it looks a little bit grainy and that's a function of probably that red clay having some sand in it and every bone in my body is aching to take a chamois to that top um, but I think I'm going to be smart and not and just let it get leather hard and I think if I take my finger and just kind of burnish or polish that edge um, with my finger, once it's leather hard, it's going to be nice. I think if I get on there with the chamois, I'm going to smear it all up and I'm going to have to do something later anyway. Um, so I'm going to cool it. I'm going to turn it around for you can, so you can see the, the final product. I've got the funky rim. I've got kind of a detail line where the rim meets this um, egg-shaped body. You can see my widest point is above the middle. So I've got a nice sort of pleasing proportion. And because I trimmed off that excess at the bottom, um, I don't really have to do anything other than wire this off and put it on a board and uh, get it dry for the bisque. I might do a little bit of um, light kind of scraping to get some of the uh, smear off of there, um, but really minimal. It's pretty much gonna be a really bold pattern. And if I choose the right glaze, that's gonna show the red against the white uh, it's going to be really interesting because it's going to come up through the glaze and uh, I hope that it'll be a pretty pot when it's all done. 
Thanks so much for watching and uh, be sure to comment if you have questions about any aspect of the process. Thanks. All right, so it's a little bit of a, an addendum here, confession time. I got done, I stood back from it and I didn't absolutely love the profile. Um, so with the camera off, um, just cause I didn't know if I was gonna like what I got, I ended up stretching it out even more and I feel like that's a much more successful shape. Kind of reminds me of the Korean moon jars, so big and full and voluminous. So um, I didn't torch it. Uh, I just went ahead and stretched it a little bit more. I got a little spicy down at the bottom, uh, a little nervous, but it worked out and now it's ready to come off the wheel. So that's the little addendum. Um, decided it just needed a little bit more inflation to have the, the full effect of that beautiful marbleized pattern. Thanks.